Hey, what's up, you guys? Your friends in neighborhood, Rasat, out here. And yeah, I need to start changing the way I intro everything because I'm so used to saying my name, my nickname from college. That I need to kind of get that brand recognition down. So instead of saying, hey, it's Pika, it's going to be Hey, Rasati. So you guys, I am so, so proud. Episode 550 under my belt today. And life just keeps on coming with these great opportunities, these great people that I get to collaborate with. I feel like I'm picking up family members along the way. Um... I love it. I I couldn't be more proud. So yesterday was a great night for us. We had the opportunity to represent both Empire Artists and the Rasadi brand at Beyond the Label Festival, which was held out at Timber Plus. Um, uh, Timber Plus is actually a container park, which is, uh, it's like gastro fabulous there's so many different kinds of food out there but they had great entertainment they have a small sound stage out there as well and then of course you know all of the beyond the label uh information so what beyond the label did uh, which is actually magnificent i really love this community building opportunity they brought together a lot of the mental health um hotlines mental health awareness projects groups that are dedicated to helping the youth and the community kind of get through the night and i was really excited to be there because i've been thinking about contacting these people one by one all this time and instead they all came together in one beautiful place and i got to jump through um and see everybody a little bit by a little bit. Um, they had some really fantastic inf- um, stuff going on. They had the youth awareness had a, uh, a panic room, not a panic room, sorry, an escape room, which kind of re um, recreated some of the stresses you'd feel at work, some of the stress you'd feel at home, stuff like that. So you had to walk through, I think it was like three or four uh, different rooms, taking you about 15 minutes each to find the clues and then to get out. And um, Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go, so I put my daughter in in my stead, and Kuti G actually made it out with no problems, and she had a really great time. They had a, a lot of virtual reality situations in there, and um, a big bubble that you can go into to kind of simulate that feeling of being alone, stuck in your own um, in your own thoughts and in your own world that you've created, and not being able to find a way out because the bubble didn't seem to have a door. So it was it was very interesting, very. Very suffocating feeling, obviously, but that was the whole point. They wanted to recreate that feeling. Um, but even then, as I came out of here, I was reminded of the reason I started the Rasadi brand, the reason I started the Night Owl podcast, the reason I post so much, the reason I started blogging and then stopped, but I need to pick it back up again, um, because I document, right? All of the podcast is about documenting, and I felt the need to leave something behind. And it's not like... You know, this legacy for the world, honestly, it's smaller than that. The legacy is for my daughter because so many people are cut short in life. They um, either can't find their way out and they choose to end it themselves or something crazy happens, um, unforeseen circumstance, and they pass away either by ailment or, you know, some tragedy and people lose people all the time. So rather than have to wonder about what she's going to learn, how she's going to be, how she's going to remember me, um, if she's going to have trouble you know, listening to the sound of my voice after I'm gone or whatever, I wanted to make sure that I had something, you know, whether it's written so he doesn't have to hear the sound of my voice or, um, you know, she sees videos of me just to remember me by just little things like that. And it sounds very, very morose, but that's not the point. The point is I needed to have the confidence to hunt. Now, that's a term that was coined by uh, E.T., the hip hop preacher, uh, Eric Thomas, and I've been listening to him a lot lately. And yeah, he has an, a tendency to yell just like Gary Vee does. It's just a different, a different, um, what is that? A different drive behind him. And I like that though, but he's, he's a father, he's a husband. And, um, as much as Gary Vee is all those things as well, he just wouldn't talk about his family and his kids much. Um, he, he just is out there in the public trying to do business. So he's business all the way. Eric Thomas, I get the feeling that he is business and family all the way. So I like listening to him. And man, when he said the confidence to hunt, I need my kids to have the confidence to hunt. That really hit me because that's kind of what I'm doing, but I'm not doing very well. I'm still kind of winging it, right? Um, I am torn between the urge to give her all of the answers to her questions and teaching her the skills that she would need to figure out the answers to all the questions. And I think that's what makes a really great coach because if you're able to show as a teacher the person where to look first every time if there's like a set plan that they can follow hey this happens in the middle of the night you're freaking out you want to call somebody and no one answers this is what you need to look for first 
And for me, honestly, when I teach my clients, it's ground yourself. Get back to the present moment. Don't get caught up in your thoughts. I know it's really hard. It's um, one of those things that you're like, oh my God, they keep telling you to do this, but how the fuck do you do this, right? So for me, it's grounding. You need to use your five senses. You need to bring yourself to the present moment and think about what's going on right now. And then we move on from there. But like I said, I am torn as a mom as a single mom, because I feel badly that, you know, she doesn't have another parent or other siblings to go to, I feel badly sometimes and I want to give her the answer rather than help her figure it out. But I also know that I can give her a fish and feed her for a day, but if I teach her how to fish, she can move on to the next skill set. You know what I mean? She can eat for a lifetime and then work on the next skill set that she needs. So I think it's really important that we as a community, we as people, especially in this is in this time frame where suddenly mental health is becoming a bigger um, concern than ever before, people are really noticing that, hey, you know, people are suffering and they don't know how to get out of their suffering or understand that, yes, the suffering can happen, but it's not something you have to go through because the pain is guaranteed. The suffering is not. And it's really up to how long, how, how strong you can make your mind Um, in order not to suffer through longer than you really need to. Now, I also know, though, that if you don't suffer sometimes, you don't appreciate the good. It's the balance of yin and yang. I feel like if you don't understand the bad, you won't appreciate the good. You won't notice it when it happens. You won't know where to look when it comes to you. A lot of the time when I was a teenager, everything felt like, you know, Murphy's Law, like whatever has to happen has to happen to me first. And if the worst is yet to happen, I'm guaranteed to happen to me first. You know what I mean? So it was like, damn, again, 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 is the kind of the feeling that I kept running through my head. And it's because I was focusing on all the bad stuff, all the difficult things that I didn't notice the little things that were great. Now, looking back, I did notice. Looking back, obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty, And those moments where I felt like despair, and like the walls were closing in on me and everyone was out to get me, those moments, I didn't realize that in the background, there was always someone who called to find out if I was okay. That was my 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 great aunt, um, the original Rasati herself, uh, Mrs. Raji Balupunev. For those of y'all who know, who grew up with me in Yogaville, y'all know the Vidyalayam was in peak shape when Mr. and Mrs. Balupunev were the teachers. And that was a hundred husband and wife duo. Uh, raised in the Montessori method, and I couldn't have been more proud because both my brothers came through that school in the Delium. Um, but I digress. Anyway, what I was trying to say, though, is looking back, I now realize that there was always somewhere, something, that, someone that was there for me. Looking back, it could have been much worse for me. Yes, I was going through this this torturous set of thoughts that was telling me that I was no good, that, you know, you keep screwing up, what the hell is wrong with you, all of those things. But honestly, I lived in a place called Yogaville. Yogaville is a community of people where all the religions come together and they live peacefully, no problems. They pray together the same way, just talking, just thinking good thoughts. You know what I mean? And it's not, you know, you don't have to find the Ganesha first. You don't have to um, do the Navakraha. You don't have to, you know, do Buddhist chants or or um, pray several times a day like the, the Islamic people do. The point is, they all understood each other. They all realized that we're saying the same thing. Do good, be good. Love all, serve all, all of that, you know? And I really, really felt that. So when um, when Eric Thomas said, hey, you know, I could, I could definitely feed him, but I'm robbing him of his own dignity and his self-respect by just feeding him if I don't teach him how to feed. There was something he was talking about, you know, he gets lots of contracts all the time to help people go through the DISC assessment. And honestly, I don't know what that is. So I'm going to go research that in a minute. But the DISC assessment is something he teaches, right? And it's a coaching method, I believe, from what I understand, very briefly, what I believe. So he gets paid big amounts of money to go through and teach people the DISC assessment, to certify people in the DISC assessment. And he said, excuse me, his son came to him and said, you know, I'd like to make some extra cash. And he said, you know what? I could teach you the DISC assessment, certify you. And if you like, once you get certified, you can practice your certification skills by taking on some of my, my other clients. Not my, you know, my one-on-one clients, but the big clients as in like, you know, the schools that want several certifications, which means you have to practice over and over and over and over and over again. That makes you a master, right? And he said, I could have immediately paid him the fee that I get, but if I do that, I'm kind of shooting him in the foot. I'm kind of getting him the expectation that he needs to make this amount 
or it's not worth it or it's it's a reflection on his skill set or how great he is but if i get him to work on it little by little then i build up his confidence i build up his trust in his abilities to make a profit to make money and to make a difference in the community as well so in order to teach someone to be confident to hunt, it means you gotta walk with them for a little bit. You gotta teach them the skills first, right? And then you gotta walk with them a little bit and let them test it out on their own. So you're like a silent observer. And then at some point, you're gonna have to let go of their hand and let them run it by themselves and see if they run back to you with any questions, comments, concerns, whatever. And honestly, that's all I'm trying to do as a coach. I wanna walk with you, I wanna understand who you are first. And then I wanna teach you or discover with you what might work best for you based on your thinking. And then from there, I'm going to slowly start to let go of your hand, little by little, every so often. And eventually, I'm going to let you be completely, not to say that I've disappeared from your life, not to say that you can't contact me no more, but to let you know that, hey, if you need me, I'm here, but I've taught you, you're good, you can, you've proven to yourself, now you got to walk on your own for a little bit, and if you fall... You can look back and make sure that I'm still there. Absolutely no problem. But I also want you to learn to pick yourself back up, which I've taught you those skills too. So honestly, teaching people to be confident to hunt is more important than giving them the answer. Because that skill set will last you a lifetime. It's real easy. People use buzzwords all the time. They're like, you know, yes, center yourself, do meditation, you will be fine. Yeah, but what does that look like? I taught a meditation class yesterday, and to be very honest, I told them, hey, meditation can be any one of a million things, but the point of meditation will be the same, to quiet your thoughts and bring yourself to the current moment, the present moment. Because honestly speaking, what is the difference between meditation and every other moment in your life if you can't quiet your mind? Does that make sense? And sometimes you teach them which tools to use. And sometimes you teach them to try many different things so they can find which one me feels best to them, feels most comfortable to them. And eventually, they will learn to choose for themselves. But you had to be there to guide them. You had to be there to kind of like watch over them for a moment and they, until they feel like they don't have to question all their choices anymore. And that's part of the thing with mental health awareness. You question everything. You question what's real and what's not real because you can't tell anymore. Back in the day, they called it multiple personality disorder. Now they call it dissociative identity disorder. What does it mean, though? It means that when I do something, I don't identify as me having done them. It was another part of me. So that's not the same as the me I am now. It's a different part of me. It's almost like saying, when I'm around my mom, I'm this one person. And when I'm around my kid, I'm this other person. And when I'm around my lover, if I have one, (laughs) I'm a different person altogether. Does that mean I have multiple personalities? Yeah, absolutely. But I, being very self-aware, am very confident and understand that all of those are aspects of me. I don't have to name them. I mean, let's face it, Sasha Fierce, isn't that a separate identity that Beyonce has created for himself? So does that mean she has a dissociative identity disorder as well? All of us do, y'all, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. You can't label these people and say that they're worse off than you are because you have moments when you do that shit too. We all go through these things. All of us feel anger, shame, guilt, fear, love, lust. All of us feel those things. And it would be foolish to say that the way you feel them is different from the way I feel them. The reasons why are different, but the feeling is pretty much the same. So please, understand, I'm here to help. And there will be moments where I can't answer the phone and be with you. But understand that while you walk with me, I'm going to teach you everything that I know, everything that I can, to make sure that when the time comes, you know what to do. It's not unfamiliar territory. It's not freaky, you know, a situation where you're going to be startled the whole way. No. The point is for you to walk with me every time you get those panic attacks, every time you feel feel like you went through mental torture. Enough times where you feel like, all right, I know what she's going to say. As in, I become a voice in your head that says, hey, come on, dude. You've seen this before. 
What do you need? Where do you get it from? What do we do next? It's kind of like the way I teach my daughter math. Because she has a tendency to reverse everything, I teach her. Right now we're working on time. And I told her, look, figure out which is the long hand, figure out which is the short hand. The long hand and the short hand. What's the difference? Which one's hours, which one's minutes? And I ask her, is there more minutes in a day or more hours in a day? She goes, minutes. All right, long hand, minutes. Once you figure out the minutes, you're going to look at the hour hand. What number is it after? A lot of people say, you know, quarter till, something till. No, I wanted to learn after first. So she looks at the time and she sees which hour it's after. And then she says, this many minutes after this hour. That's perfect. That's all I need her to do. I will not let her have a digital watch. She needs an analog watch for as long as possible until this becomes second nature. She don't have to think about it no more. So she knows. She knows the questions I'm going to ask and exactly which order I'm going to ask them in. So she will go through on her own and figure it out. And I've asked her to say it out loud for a while so, she, so I can hear that she's going through that one specific set of instructions in a specific order. And she's getting there. Sometimes she, you know, she's in a hurry. The TV's going. She's not paying attention. But she's getting there. She knows. First, she needs to identify which one's the long hand, which one's the short hand. Then she needs to think about, all right, are there more hours or minutes in a day? Long hand equals minutes. And then how many minutes? And then which hour are we looking at? How many minutes after which hour? And we got it, the time. Every single time. So I hope this makes sense. I hope you understand what I'm getting at. And this is why the podcast exists. So you can see my mindset. And you'll see it as it shifts, as I get new information. And I say, oh, you know, this is a better way. You'll see it. But in the meantime, you know I'm me no matter where I am. Whether it was live from the, the BTL festival yesterday or while I'm doing my IGTV videos every, every third day <laughs> or the posts that I write, the poetry that I write, all of that, you know who I am. Well, you better know who I am. <laughs> but if you have any questions, concerns, comments, please drop them below the video. I'd be happy to answer. I'm looking forward to you interacting with me more because that's how I know what you need rather than all right, I think this is relevant. Let me talk about this today. Here? So if you want to help me curate my content, let me know what you need. And I'll do my best to serve. All right, you guys, I'll get out of here. Ross at the out.